afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us. My name is Nada Filipovic. I'm the marketing manager at American Wire Group. We're pleased to welcome you to our medium voltage cables, insulation, shields, and jacket webinar. Thank you very much for joining us. A few important housekeeping items we're going to go over. This webinar is being recorded, and a copy of the recording will be emailed to all attendees. At any time during the webinar, you can send us your questions by entering in your request in the questions box and selecting send to all. Time permitting, we will answer all your questions, but if you're unable to answer any of your questions, we will follow up by email. At the end of this webinar, we'll also present to you a short teaser for our upcoming webinar. Now I'll pass it over to our presenter, Isaac Mueller. Go ahead, Isaac. Thank you, Nada. Hello, I'm Isaac Mueller, Applications Engineer for American Wire Group. For more than 11 years now, I've been working as an Applications Engineer for a wire and cable manufacturer, uh, focusing on wire and cable applications in the United States and Canada. Currently, I am a voting member on the Canadian Electrical Code Executive Committee in Part 1, representing wire and cable manufacturers. I am Section 4 Chair for wiring methods for conductors and ampasties, and section 12 vice chair for wiring methods. I continue to be active in these positions on the Canadian Electrical Code Committees. I am also a member of several task groups and working groups for the Canadian Electrical Code. Over the past decade, I have been actively participating on UL and CSA standards committees focusing on how wiring cables manufactured, tested, and marked. Although I have been focusing on manufacturing, I also have practical experience in determining the right wire or cable for many different applications with a focus on NEC or Canadian Electrical Code compliance. As a professional electrical engineer working for a wire and cable manufacturer, my primary role has been to run several different calculations for impasti, conductor operating temperature, impedance, sag intention, and other factors, often using software such as SIMCAP, SAG-10, and PLSCAD. Let's get started. For nearly 20 years that American Wire Group has been operating, Thinking Customer has been at the heart of our core values. Our core values shown here are what our team practices daily. We believe this is what makes us the strong company that we are today. Our continually growing range of wire and cable products emphasize our focus on servicing our customers' needs. We have overhead conductors such as ACSR, AAC, and ACSS, along with OPGW, bare copper, as well as copper or aluminum clad steel to cover your overhead transmission and distribution system needs. Our medium voltage power cables are rated 5 kV to 46 kV, with fully water blocked stranded conductors meeting or exceeding industry requirements. We use only the highest grade EPR and TRXLPE insulation compounds for a worry-free medium voltage cable system. Although our focus is on concentric neutral or round wire metallic shields, we also have flat copper tape or flat copper strap metallic shields available should you, your need for these systems arise. With a 90 degrees Celsius or 105 degrees Celsius continuous conductor operating temperature rating and an available crosslink polyethylene jacket, you are guaranteed to get a medium voltage power cable that meets the needs of today's demanding installations. We also carry a wide range of low voltage cable systems, including substation cables, DLO, as well as battery storage system wiring cable. The cables that we offer are listed certified or qualified in accordance with UL, CSA, ICEA, or ASTM standards, making them suitable for installation and use in the United States or Canada. During this presentation, we will take a brief look at medium voltage power cables and compare some of the more popular options available in the market. We will briefly look at what standards are typically used for medium voltage cable constructions for installations in the United States and Canada. We will look at the key differences between tree retardant crosslink polyethylene and ethylene propylene rubber insulation systems, focusing on electrical, 
and physical characteristics, as well as ratings and dielectric losses. The three more common metallic shields will be defined and compared, providing a few selection criteria for each. Last but not least, we will look at various cable jackets. Again, we have selected the three more common jackets available today, which cover both thermoplastic and thermoset material types. We will finish this presentation off with a summary, followed by an opportunity to ask any questions that you may have, time permitting, of course. There are several medium voltage cable standards that define how these cables are manufactured, tested, and marked. There are several options available in each standard so that a cable could be manufactured to have a long service life for a particular installation. In the United States, there are several Insulated Cable Engineers Association, or ICEA, standards, as well as Underwriters Laboratories, or UL, standard for medium voltage cables. The ICEA standards focus on cables for utility applications, while the UL standard focuses on commercial and industrial applications falling under the National Electrical Code, or NEC. In Canada, there are two Canadian Standards Association, or CSA standards for medium voltage cables. CSA C68.5 is for utility applications, while CSA C68.10 is for commercial and industrial applications, which may fall under Canadian Electrical Code or, uh, or CE Code. The ICA and CSA medium voltage cable standards recognize components, testing and markings for water block conductors, both in the stranding of the phase conductor as well as under the cable jacket. CSA C68.5 also mentions an optional connectability test for water blocked stranded conductors, which is the current cycle test from ANSI C119.4. A common question is, what standard do I use for the cable that I need? The chart shown here should help provide guidance as to what standard should be used for a particular application. For applications in the United States that fall under the NEC, UL 1072 would apply. This standard recognizes cable constructions for commercial and industrial applications with voltage ratings from 2.4 kV to 35 kV. These cables are UL listed as type MV90 or MV105 and are recognized under Article 311 in the NEC. Cables under this standard include a metallic shield consisting of round copper concentric neutral wires or concentric flat copper straps, flat or corrugated copper tapes, or a combination of these. Also, armoring options include aluminum or steel interlocked armor, or continuously corrugated and welded aluminum sheath armor. These cables may be manufactured, tested, and marked for installations exposed to direct sunlight, direct burial, indoors with flame spread markings, cable tray markings, aerial or submarine applications. For applications in the United States that are not under the NEC, we have the ICEA standards. ICEA S93639 is generally for commercial and industrial applications with cables rated 5 kV to 46 kV with similar cable constructions to UL1072. ICEA S94649 is for typical utility applications, cables rated 5 kV to 46 kV with copper concentric neutral wires for installations exposed to direct sunlight or direct burial. ICEA S97682 is for special utility applications where flat or corrugated copper tapes are required. For applications in Canada, there are CSA standards for medium voltage cables. For commercial and industrial applications, including those falling under the CE code, with similar cable constructions to UL1072, we have CSA C68.10. For typical utility applications, cables rated 15 kV to 46 kV with copper concentric neutral wires for installations were exposed to direct sunlight or direct burial, we have CSA C68.5. The two more common medium voltage cable conductor insulations are true retardant crosslink polyethylene or TRXLPE and ethylene propylene rubber or EPR. 
TRXLPE uses a crosslink polyethylene base with a tree retardant additive. XLPE can be used as a single or dual layer insulation system rated 300 volts to 5 kV for low voltage non shielded cables. TRXLPE is typically used in a three layer insulation system rated 5 kV to 46 kV for medium voltage shielded power cables. For systems rated 46 kV to 500 kV, a three layer XLPE insulation system is used. EPR can be rated 600 volts to 46 kV where it is used in a single layer system for low voltage systems rated up to 5 kV and non-shielded, or a three layer insulation system rated 5 kV to 46 kV for medium voltage shielded power cables. Although EPR is recognized for use in cable insulation systems rated 69 kV to 500 kV, it is rarely used in such systems. The high dielectric loss of EPR is one reason for this, which we will review later in this presentation. When deciding whether to use TRXLPE or EPR insulation for your medium voltage cable, you need to consider the electrical and physical characteristics of each and compare these to the requirements of your system. TRXLPE formulations are generally very similar, while EPR formulations vary widely. What we have done here is compared a middle-of-the-road EPR insulation system to TRXLPE. Some EPR systems might be better than what is shown here, while others might be worse. It really depends on the formulation. TRXLPE is known to have a very high insulation resistance when compared to EPR because of the high dielectric strength and the low dielectric constant. A typical value for the TRXLPE dielectric constant is 2.3. TRXLPE is also a very tough insulation system, resistant to cutting, impact, and other mechanical forces. The susceptibility to water treeing is dramatically reduced due to a tree retardant additive. TRXLPE is generally lighter in weight than EPR. TRXLPE insulation systems are specified by Canadian utilities as well as by US and Canadian renewable project engineers. Since the characteristics of EPR depend on the formulation used and the recipe for every EPR is different, EPR in general can have a wide range of characteristics. What we will dis discuss here is a narrow range of commonly available EPR formulations. EPR is a highly flexible insulation system due largely to its rubber-like characteristics. As such, EPR insulated conductors generally have a smaller minimum bending radius compared to TRXLPE. This means that EPR insulated cables can be installed in a tighter space. With a dielectric constant in the typical range of 2.8 to 3.2, again, depending on the formulation, the dielectric losses in EPR insulations can be larger. Since EPR is naturally tree retardant, there is no need to add a tree retardant additive. EPR is commonly used in the oil and gas market where chemical resistance may be of concern as well as in US utility applications. Here we see a comparison of the net cable weight for TRXLPE ins TRXL insulated cables versus EPR insulated cables. The overall cable weight with EPR insulation is anywhere from 6 to 12 percent heavier than the same cable with TRXLPE insulation. This may not seem like much, however when you consider that you could have 10,000 feet of one aught cable with a full concentric neutral on a 96 inch reel, that would be 9,500 pounds if TRXLPE were used versus 10,440 pounds if EPR were used, a difference of over 900 pounds. Since TRXLPE and EPR are both thermoset insulation systems, the maximum temperature ratings are the same. With a higher maximum operating temperature, the maximum continuous current is higher, but either the maximum short circuit current is lower or the short circuit duration is shorter. The difference in short circuit current between 105 and 90 degrees C rated cable is 94%. The following table will illustrate this fact. 
This table shows the maximum short circuit current for both the 90 degree and 105 degree C uh, rated insulations. For aluminum conductors, size 2 gauge to 2000 kc mil with a short circuit duration of 8, 16 and 24 cycles. Dielectric losses are defined as the non-current dependent losses when a voltage is applied across a material, typically an insulating material. These losses are caused by the in-phase components of voltage and current. The formulae shown here are used to calculate these losses. Let's look at an example where we use a dielectric constant of 3.0 for EPR and 2.3 for TRXLPE. In the case of a 500 kc mil compact stranded aluminum conductor with a 35 kV rated 100% insulation level operating at 90 degrees Celsius, we would have a dielectric loss of about 814 watts per thousand feet for TRXLPE. For the same cable but with EPR, the dielectric loss is about 3749 watts per thousand feet. That is a difference of over 2,900 watts per thousand feet of cable. If we consider a 10,000 foot long length of the same cable operating all year, based on the US national average electricity cost, the cost of the lost electricity for TRX LPE would be about $9,400 per year. For the same situation, but with EPR, the cost of the lost electricity would be about $43,300 per year. That is a difference of about $33,900 per year. To properly distribute voltage stress in the shielded medium voltage insulation system, a metallic component must be applied in direct electrical contact with the insulation shield. This metallic component is referred to as the metallic shield and is typically one or a combination of the following. Round bare copper concentric neutral wires, rectangular bare copper flat strap concentric neutral, or flat bare copper tape. Other metallic shield possibilities include corrugated copper tapes, tinned copper components, or lead sheaths. Our focus will be on the typical metallic shield constructions. This metallic shield component also provides a ground fault current path, a grounded outermost cable component for safety, and contains the electrical interference that would otherwise affect adjacent cables and systems. Concentric neutral wire shields usually consist of solid round bare copper wires the total size of which is based on the conductivity of the phase conductor. A concentric neutral wire shield may also be sized based on the short circuit requirements of the system. Medium voltage cables with a full concentric neutral are typically used in single phase applications. For three phase four wire applications, one third concentric neutral for each cable is used altogether, resulting in a full system neutral. Likewise, three-phase, four-wire, reduced neutral configurations are also possible. Typical applications include residential pad mount transformers, as well as utility, commercial, and industrial distribution and services. Concentric neutral cables are also widely used in renewable generation applications, wind and solar farms, that is, where the concentric neutral is sized based on the fault current carrying capabilities. Flat strap shields usually consist of solid rectangular bare copper straps, ranging in size depending on the manufacturer. As with a round concentric wire shield, the size is typically based on conductivity, but may be based on a minimum specified short circuit capability instead. Medium voltage cables with a flat strap neutral are typically used where a smaller diameter alternative to concentric neutral power cable is required. Replacement of an existing installation of paper insulated lead sheathed cable or PILC in underground duct is a prime example. 
Although medium voltage cables with a flat strap neutral are more difficult to strip and terminate as compared to modern concentric neutral power cables, they are easier to install as compared to PILC. They are also a cost-effective and environmentally friendly solution to PILC. As we can see here, for an aluminum 35 kV rated, 100% insulation level, TRXLPE insulated power cable with a cross-link polyethylene jacket, the overall diameter reduction for a flat strap neutral cable compared to a round concentric wire neutral cable can be as much as 10%. Greater diameter reductions may be possible with a few cable design tweaks. This table is here to illustrate that there is a diameter reduction that may help in certain installations. Flat copper tape is also another option for the metallic shield component where a 5 mil thick uncoated copper tape of varying width is applied helically around the insulated conductor with a minimum 25% overlap. This overlap is defined such that if the cable is bent, then the copper tape overlap will not separate, maintaining its electrical contact, minimizing the net met metallic shield resistance. Since the resulting neutral size based on conductivity is small, this shield option is usually specified for use in a three-phase, three-wire system where a neutral conductor is not required as part of the system. As such, the short circuit current capability or duration is significantly lower than that for a concentric neutral wire or flat strap shield. Typical applications into, include utility, commercial, and industrial distribution and services. A medium voltage cable jacket is selected based on the application to protect the cable from the installation environment allowing the cable to achieve a long and worry-free service life. The cable jacket may be overlying where it is extruded into a tube over the metallic shielding layer, or extruded to fill, meaning that it is extruded over top of and in between the metallic shield components. This is quite often done with concentric wire shields in one pass so that the individual wires do not move when the cable is handled. Extruded to fill jackets also fill the void between the concentric wires so that in case of a compromised jacket, water cannot easily migrate down the length of the cable. Water blocking additives such as water swellable yarns or powders can also be used under the jacket to prevent water migration. Of the many cable jacket possibilities, the three most common for medium voltage cables are PVC, linear low density polyethylene, and crosslink polyethylene. When we look at the physical characteristics of the jackets, we find that installation conditions need to be known before a jacket type can be selected and designed to work in that specific application. PVC is easily made sunlight resistant and flame retardant, making it a cost-effective jacketing solution. Depending on the formulation, PVC jackets can be made with a wide variety of characteristics, making this a typical jacket material for commercial and industrial cables. Linear low density polyethylene is a robust and cost effective jacketing solution. With the ability to make this material abrasion resistant with a low temperature handling and installation down to minus 40 degrees Celsius, it has been the preferred jacket for utility installations where flame spread and building wire tray ratings are not required. XLPE is a very robust jacketing solution with a high metallic uh, shield short circuit temperature rating thanks to the fact that this is a thermoset material. With the very, physic, uh, with the very physical uh, attributes, this jacketing material could be used in a wide range of applications. Crosslink polyethylene jackets, however, are typically only specified for utility applications. To illustrate the effect of the short circuit temperature rating of the jacket, we will look at a few examples. For the first example, we will consider a 500 kc mil aluminum cable rated 35 kV with 100% insulation level. TRXLPE insulated 
and rated 105 degrees Celsius with a concentric neutral consisting of 16 12 gauge bare round copper wires, jacketed with either a thermoplastic or a thermoset material. When a thermoplastic jacket is used, such as linear low density polyethylene or PVC, the maximum concentric neutral short circuit temperature would be 200 degrees Celsius. Alternatively, when a thermoset jacket is used, such as crosslink polyethylene, the maximum concentric neutral short circuit temperature would be 350 degrees Celsius. This would result in a significant increase versus the thermoplastic jacketed cable. It should be noted that the values shown here, especially the temperatures, as well as the calculation methods, are as indicated in ICEA P45482. For the second example, we will consider a 500 kc mil aluminum cable rated 35 kV with 100% insulation level, TRXLPE insulated and rated 105 degrees Celsius with a one-third concentric neutral size based on the short circuit capability with a thermoplastic jacket as a reference. When a thermoplastic jacket is used, such as linear low density polyethylene or PVC, the maximum concentric neutral short circuit temperature would be 200 degrees Celsius. Since this is the reference design, the one-third concentric neutral is sized based on conductivity, resulting in 16 12 gauge bare round copper wires. Alternatively, when a thermoset jacket is used, such as crosslink polyethylene, the maximum concentric neutral short circuit temperature would be 350 degrees Celsius. To meet the similar shield short circuit requirement as compared to the thermoplastic jacketed cable, the concentric neutral configuration could be 11 12 gauge bare co round copper wires. The result is that when a crosslink polyethylene jacket is used on a medium voltage concentric neutral power cable, where the concentric neutral wires are used only for short circuit current carrying capability, then the concentric neutral copper content could be reduced. In summary, in this very brief presentation, we reviewed the many different medium voltage cable standards available, which define cable constructions for commercial, industrial, and utility applications in the United States and Canada. The two key insulation systems were compared providing reasons to choose one over the other, depending on the installation conditions and system requirements. The three more common metallic shields were compared, and again, reasons for selecting each provided. The three most common medium voltage cable jacket materials were compared, focusing on reasons to select each, depending on the application environment. So why does XLPE jacket give a cable uh, 105, MB 105 rating, while LLDPE gives MB 90? Um, well, it's, that, that's a very good question. Uh, the, the maximum conductor temperature rating is not really dependent on uh, the jacketing material. That is to say that uh, with a linear low density polyethylene jacket, you can achieve MB90 ratings on the conductor itself. It depends on the formulation of the linear low density polyethylene jacket. It depends on the underlying insulation system being used. So with a linear low density polyethylene jacket, you could achieve an MB90 or an MB105 rating. It's not dependent on a crosslink polyethylene jacket. The key advantage with a crosslink polyethylene jacket is that you can get a higher short circuit temperature rating of 350 degrees C as opposed to the uh, 250 degrees C. When is linear low density polyethylene a better application than crosslink polyethylene in utility solar projects? Um, that is a good question and from what i've seen with utility solar applications um, the installations are uh, very much trying to be as cost effective as possible so reducing the cost of the various cable components as much as possible is going to help 
So pushing the copper components or the conductor material components to the extreme. So trying to get a higher short circuit uh, rating out of the material um, is what's really being pushed for more than anything. So going to a crosslink polyethylene jacket, you can achieve a higher short circuit temperature rating with less copper versus linear low density polyethylene. Okay, thank you, Isaac. Um, that wraps up our webinar for today. Uh, thank you everybody for joining us.